Hi, this is Chris. Um, today I'm going to show you a few quick and simple fixes that uh, you can do in your office um, to help you out, to maybe save some service calls. Uh, a couple things with your syringes, and then we'll move to the hand pieces. So for this first fix, I'm going to show you how to replace the O-ring on the syringe tip. So if you push the air button and you get water coming out of the straw along with the air, a lot of times it's the O-ring underneath the syringe tip. So you can just unscrew this guy. And this little small black O-ring right there, a lot of times that's the culprit. So if you can just get some kind of a tool to pry that out with. And then just pop on the new one and it just fits in the groove there. You can just kind of press it down. And then you simply just screw it back in, like so. And that's all there is to it. So just get a, get a straw, put it in there, hit your air, and you should just get air. Um, yeah, and that syringe or that little O-ring should take care of that. And you'll be set. All right. Next, I'm gonna show you how to replace the buttons on your air water syringe. Um, you would do this if say you were getting water leaking out of the buttons or if you push it and it sticks uh, that's a good indication that it's time to replace the buttons so the first thing you want to do is turn the unit off and then drain any air that you have if you forget to do this step and you remove that screw these buttons will go shooting off so <laughs> just remember to uh, turn the unit off so once you know the air is out we can take off the buttons now there's two types of syringes. This one has a screw on it. There's another style that has a pin through it. Um, unfortunately, I don't have that one here. If it had the pin, you would simply get some type of a small Allen wrench or a, an instrument and just push the pin out and then pull it out the other side. This one has a small Allen screw on the top. And we'll just take that out. And the actual syringe or the button kit comes with this Allen wrench. So you don't have to worry about having one of these on hand. So we'll just loosen that button and then you can pop out these buttons and there's one and there's another one and also in here there's a spring that you want to get out. So get rid of that. Okay so we got the buttons out and the springs. I always like to take a Q-tip and clean these out just because you can get some nasty goop out of there. So we'll get that cleaned out. Okay, and then we'll install the new buttons. Um, now the, the button install kit comes with this uh, silicone lubricant. So we'll just take a little bit of this. It does, you don't need a lot. Uh, coat, coat the O-rings on the buttons. Springs go in first. You want to make it sh so the large end goes in first and the smaller opening goes on top. So it almost looks like an upside down ice cream cone or something. Put both of those in. Okay. And then you just install the new buttons. Like so. The last thing you need to do is install the screw, and sometimes this can be a little tricky. So I get the buttons in there, and then I put the screw in as best I can. Okay. And then push the buttons down and thread that screw back in there. There we go. Tighten that down nice and snug. And then just test them, make sure they, they push easily. And then you're all set. That's all there is to it. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to change the O-rings on your high-speed coupler. And you wanna do this if, from a couple things, if you're getting water leaking out of the handpiece. Or another thing that happens is the O-rings are bad and what happens is water works its way through the exhaust you start getting water dripping out of the back of the unit where the oil collector is. So you'll be uh, running your handpiece and water can sometimes just start pouring out of here. 
what you want to do if you're getting any of those symptoms is the first thing would be to replace the O-rings. And so these, this is another pretty simple fix. We're just going to basically just pop off the old O-rings and just roll them off the best you can. There's five of them on here, three larger ones and two smaller ones. I just remove all the old ones to start with. Okay. And then once I got the old ones off, I just reverse the process and put the new ones on. I start with the small ones usually and just work my way down the line. Okay. Now these O-rings fit in these little channels on the coupler. You'll see, um, so I got my top o-ring on. If you look in this middle channel, you'll see a hole. You don't want to cover that up. That's not where it goes. Um, if you cover that up, you won't get water coming out of there. So you slide it past that and then it fits in the next channel here. And I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So you see I got the top one and then you got your open hole and then there's the next o-ring and it goes the same for the larger ones so I'll get a larger o-ring in this channel right here and then if you look yeah there's a hole in the next one you don't want to put the o-ring there and so you just go one more channel and that's where we'll put our next o-ring and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all finished here so slide on the larger o-ring And that'll go in the first channel. And again, the next one, you'll see there's a hole. So we're gonna skip that one and go to the next one. And you, I just keep rolling these until they get to where they need to go. There we go. And then we've got one more in this last channel. Last o ring. Okay, and there you go. And so I just always double check. So you got an o ring, then you got an air water hole, then you got an o ring, another hole, o ring, a smaller o ring, a hole, and then your smaller o ring. And this one is ready to go. You can put your hand piece back on, then you're all set. Next, I'm gonna show you how to change the light bulb on your fiber optic handpiece. So first, we will remove the handpiece. Now this one's obviously working, but if it wasn't, uh, on the coupler, the top of it screws off. So it's just a little metal cap, and set that aside. And then just to remove the old light bulb, you just give it a, a gentle pull, and then that pops out. Um, there's a few different styles of light bulbs. This one, you can't put on backwards. Um, it's just, there's only one way to put this one on. So you just simply pop this one back on. And this would obviously be a new light bulb. Slide it back on, screw the cap back on, and you'd be all set to go. Now there's another style that can actually go on backwards, so to speak. Um, these light bulbs, some of them are polarity sensitive. So if you put it on one way and you still don't get a light, try taking it back off, flipping it 180 degrees and then putting it back on. And that should um, fix the issue. If you're still having a problem and the light bulb's not coming on, there might be something else going on. So like I said, it just depends what type of light bulb you have. Uh, this particular one, it only goes on one way. If you got one that has a flat base, it can go on one of two ways. It's not going to hurt it if you put it on backwards, it just won't light. So if you put it on, you don't get a light, just rotate it 180 degrees and try it that way. And that should resolve the issue. Once you're done with the light bulb, you would just screw the cap back on and then put your handpiece on and then you are all set. 
Okay, so for the next thing I'm going to show you, it's going to be how to adjust the water and coolant air on your high-speed handpiece. So I'm going to show you this one. It's kind of messed up at the moment. It's getting a ton of water, and it's not getting that nice misty cloud that we like. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. So on the side, now, all units are a little bit different, but somewhere on the side or the back of the unit, you should have some adjustment knobs. And the way you tell the handpiece, so you count from left to right. So you got your syringe, and then you have position one, two, three, and four. And so here's position one, two, three, and four. This one's just bypassed. Um, but our high speed is actually in position one. So this is the one we're gonna wanna adjust. So this is the water adjustment for position one. This is the water position water adjustment for position two, three, and four. And this guy here with the little cloud, kind of looks like a dust of air blowing. This is your coolant air. Now to adjust this, the first thing I'm gonna do is turn the coolant air all the way to the right, that turns it off. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the high speed handpiece adjustment. So right now I'm just turning the water off. You don't wanna over tighten this just until it gets um, snug and stops. And then when I run the handpiece, there shouldn't be much of anything coming out of it. Maybe a little dribble. As you can see that, there's not a lot of anything coming out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some water. And just until it starts coming out, you can see it's getting more and more water here. And then right about there. So that we got our water right about where we want it. And now I'm going to add some of the coolant air to make that nice mist. And I'll just slowly turn that to the left. And you can see how it's starting to form that nice cloud up. Hopefully you can get that in the shot. I'm going to add a little more water. And I think that's just about right. You can see we're getting a nice mist out of there. It's not a ton of water. But it's, and it's not going to you know, drown the patient. But uh, it's getting plenty for the coolant. And once you have it set, you should be good. You shouldn't need to adjust it. Maybe some minor tweaks here and there, but that's really about it. Okay, for the next one, I'm going to show you how to replace the O-ring on the tip of your HVE valve. Um, you want to do this if like you put in your straw and it just wants to fall out, doesn't want to stay in there. There's actually a small O-ring in here that holds that straw in. And sometimes it'll just be missing, and sometimes it'll just be really worn out. This one's pretty worn out. So what you need is some kind of tool to get under there and grab the old O-ring, and then just pull that guy out. And then to put in the new one, there's a channel, if you can see that, that the new one goes in. It just goes in this channel right here. So you just want to start feeding that new one in there as best you can. And usually it'll go part of the way in and then you just need to grab some type of instrument and then just work it slowly into the groove. And then just check to make sure it's seated fully and you're all set. For this video I'm going to show you how to turn off and on your nitro system. So at the end of the day what you want to do is first thing you turn off is your alarm panel. So you see, in your panel may look different, but there's usually an on-off button. So you just turn that off. And now you would go to your tanks and actually turn your tanks off. So now this system is off. So when you come in the next morning, you just want to reverse the order. So the first thing you do is turn your tanks on, and then come up to the alarm panel and turn the system on. Now this one you have to hit twice, and eventually that light should go green. and then you're all set. Um, you just wanna make sure you get the tanks and the alarm panel in the correct order, otherwise it can cause issues with your system.